You know, as of 1970, I would say that was the year where it became a, uh, an obsession. When I was 12, and after the Gold Rush, Moondance, Sweet Baby James, Elton John's first record, Deja Vu, um, I mean, it was, it was the apex of the greatest singles still, and also the beginning of the greatest albums. It's called Listening Booth. The way I used to listen to music, aside from in my own room under headphones, was at John Wade Record Store, was the name of the store that was at Shaker Square in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, you could go in and in, you wouldn't have to buy a record without hearing it. You could go in the back of the store, there were five or six of these glass enclosed booths, a great turntable sitting there, and you could pick the records, which I used to, and check them out before buying them. I mean, I never would have imagined 20 years ago doing a record like this, because to me the whole attraction for me was my self-expression, right? right? But 20 years down the road, I'm sort of finding like, you know what? Some of my favorite singers aren't writers, and some of the best records I love are not singer-songwriter right. records, and there was really a cool way to sort of still be, um, still express something very personal through other people's music, and even if I'm only focusing on Right. being the singer. Uh, Wild World was the key into this album, perhaps, for both of us. It was the first song we thoroughly deconstructed, and I think it, it, uh, in that we did it completely differently from Cat Stevens. <laughs> well, I remember that was sort of the, the first indication that this concept of 1970 was going to work. Because you called me and you'd finally, you said, hey, check this out. You would come up with a groove. So do you remember, like, the moment when you found a way into doing Wild World, it was sure. different? Sure, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, you know, part of our process is we were just never going to do a version like the original, so I guess the original is more like... Um, which we totally left out, right? We don't even sing that. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, we love all that. But, uh, you know, so my brain just has to throw that out. <laughs> And, um, and, you know, I can't explain exactly, but it's just sort of like, well, what if it kind of swung a little bit? It was, you know, so the, the, before I even did anything, I just did this, I think. It just went. And the, uh, literally the second I did that, I said, oh, that's it. You know. Right. And then you started singing. You know, I said, can you sing to that? And. Because I never want to leave you inside, girl. Don't be a bad girl. But if you want to leave, take good care. Hope you make a lot of nice friends out there. But just remember there's a lot of bad out be interesting to our viewers and listeners out there like kind of a, just a short version of what our process was because it was a little unusual probably for both of us a mm -hmm. little bit basically we would just sit uh, in front of the console and with our microphones and just re in a relaxed way play the songs until we found something we liked and then uh, <laughs> for better or worse it's a curse and a blessing folks I can play a lot of different instruments and if something was really resonating I would just jump in there and start playing all the instruments right. and for the most part 
it worked out, you know. Well, man, and you're, you're basically the band, and I really do feel like you are, um, this is every bit as much your record as it is mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, of course, if it if it turns out to be tremendously successful, it was yeah. pretty much all about it was my all idea. About you. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. But you know, if it's just moderate, <laughs> I would say it's our record. It's interesting. 1970s, the year the last Beatles album and the first George Harrison album, the first Paul McCartney album, and the first uh, John Lennon album. Right. Plastic Ono Band record was a huge record for me as well. Um, has some really powerful songs on that record. Mother comes to mind. It's a deep, deep song. Um, but this song, Look At Me, which is really just a finger-picked ballad, sounds a little bit like Julia, yeah. one of my favorite Lennon songs. Um, but you're right, the minute we started playing it, I don't know where you came up with that idea, but all of a sudden it sounded like a Lennon song put to a McCartney record, um, which is why this was all so much fun. Yeah, I don't know why my mind works like that, but I think it works like, oh, what if Paul McCartney was in the Staples Singers? <laughs> I don't know. Doing a Lennon song. Me. What am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be? Look at me. Oh, my love. It, 1970 is sort of an interesting year, too, when you think about it. Um, the Beatles broke up, um, Simon and Garfunkel broke up, but they their best, out, probably their best album. Their best yeah, record, right. exactly. Far, yeah. So it was really very sort of dramatic time, too, in terms of all the stuff that was going on just musically, not That's to mention... I want to go back knowing what I know now. Can I do that? No. Ugh. Well, you can. You can make this record. Only Living Boy in New York, that was a lot of fun. We did that, uh, actually, that's one of the songs we did live. Completely and it was live. beautiful. Uh, I think we had a sense that we wanted to kind of slow it down and make it kind of intimate and less poppy. Mm -hmm. And we did that live with our friend Tim Lunsell on Upright Bass and um, probably did it four or five times and we got a great take. It was amazing. Don't know where. Tom, get your plane right on time. I know you've been eager to fly now. Let your honesty shine, shine, shine now. Don't it, don't it, don't it, don't like it shines on me. The only living boy in New York. The only living boy in New York. So the letter, did you always love that song? Or? Loved it. I loved the Box Tops original. Right. And Cocker did a great cover too. Right. He had kind of a hit with it yeah, in right. 1970. Exactly. So your job again was if this was going to work, how do we do it in a way that had nothing to do in a way with those two very well-known versions? And you found it. The thought never entered my mind anyway to compete with right. any of the other versions. And I really love this kind of late night feeling we're having this uh, very, I, I just, I feel it's just this incredibly soulful feeling we got on that particularly on that cut mm -hmm. it's just relaxed and it just seems per it seems to me like that song could have been should have been done that way originally right and i'm really happy with the way it turned me out me too it's one of my favorites yeah, on the I record think you too. sound great on it thank you sir For an airplane, I ain't got time to take a fast train. Lonely days are gone. I'm a going home. My baby just wrote me a letter. I don't care how much money I got to spend. I got to get back to my baby again. Lonely days are gone. She wrote me a letter She could not live without me no more Listen, mister, can't you see 
I don't want to say we've made a soul record genre-wise, but I think we've made a really soulful record. And I think once we rec recognized that we found the core soulfulness of the way we wanted to do it, we were like, great. Right. And everything else was almost sort of secondary because we understood that it worked on the most basic level of a great song, great singer, good fundamental approach to it. Well, it's a funny thing to say, but 20 years after making records, into making records, which were all my songs, primarily, except for a couple of exceptions, this record of tunes that I didn't write, I really think is my best record. And um, I can't wait for people to hear it. I'm really, I'm proud of the partnership John and I had in this record. Um, I think in a way we couldn't have made this record with original songs. It was just so easy. And I think the ease with which we made this record comes through the speakers. It's just cool, it's sexy, it's sultry, it's uh, different. And I can't wait for everybody to hear it. Lonely days are gone.